Okay, okay, blessings in the matchless and precious name of Jesus Christ. Do you know and do you realize that your survival nowadays, your survival is not only in the spirit, but it is in practicality. It is in those things that are around you. The Bible says in Hosea 4 and 6, I believe it is, that my people, my, he's taking, he says this, I, I own this. I have an investment in this. They are attached to me. They, my people are attached to me and my people, they perish, they diminish, they are given over to destruction for a lack of knowledge. Now, I, I, take, I take issue with the body of Christ because many of us within the body of Christ, we don't understand that in order for us to walk this thing out in excellence, in order for us to walk it out in power and in demonstration, there is something that we have to get that is beyond the Bible. And, 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 and let me clarify that because some, some people might say, well, is he preaching against the Bible? Is he preaching against Jesus? No, I'm, I'm not. What I'm saying is, is that we have been inclined to delve and to rely too deeply in just the spiritual things of the Bible. I, I just believe God by, by faith, my, my situation is going to change. My finances are going to change. By faith, I just believe it. And, and with faith, there is no knowledge of the economy whatsoever. There's no knowledge of how your uh, money is being invested and being distributed. There is no knowledge and understanding of those monetary resources that God has graciously distributed to you for you to be a good steward over. But yet you figure and you say that I, that it's going to be OK because I, I, I got faith spiritualized. You spiritualize It's It's like osmosis. It's like, you know, I'll go to sleep and I'll put the Bible underneath my head and I'll rest. And in the morning, all my troubles are going to be gone away. You need more than the Bible. And I will go further to say that you need more than just Jesus carte blanche. You, you see, your, your, your relationship with Jesus is just that. It's your relationship with Jesus. Okay. And in Jesus, all things happen, all things were made, all things are possible. You are right. Jesus is the end all. He is the, he would be the alpha and the omega, but that's him. There's something that you need to know about him that he knew. And that's what he's trying to get you. See, greater is he that is in you that than he that is in the world. But you have to be able to go down and grab the knowledge and everything about him out of him to bring forth out of you in order for you to walk and experience that change. Right now, God's people are on the defense and the enemy is wham, 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 wham. And God is saying, how long will you allow the enemy to beat you down? How long? 
And you saying, well, God, I'm praying and I'm believing and I'm just trusting you, Lord. I'm just trusting you and I'm believing in you that you're going to change this thing that's going on around us. You're going to change. It's going to come. And it continues to fester. It continues to harbor. Things don't get better. You continue to get more and more discouraged. You feel more and more helpless and hopeless. And why is that? Because you need more than just what you've been doing. And, 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 and you know what? I, I, I got to say this because it is, it is an issue. And I take issue with this. Because a lot of our people, we want to see change without putting in the work. In order for you to know about Jesus, because you keep calling his name, you got to study Jesus. You got to study him. You, 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 you got to get into his letters. What did he say? What was his words to you through the B-I-B-L-E? What was his words to you? How, how, how? engrafted are those words how in tune how innate are they in you ha, ha, have they become a part of your dna well see the issue is we want it but we want to sit on the couch and eat bonbons and we want to watch tv and we want to feel good every day and we want everything to happen to us and just you know so just so i wanted to just be so and uh, this salvific uh, Christianity is going in the toilet, you know, because it's easy to just be salvific. I, I believe that the Lord came, he hung on the cross, he died for my sins. And, and if I believe that, I confess that. And through my confession, I am saved. Well, big whoop, big whoop. You did a really good job. You, you believed in Jesus. But you made absolutely no difference for yourself, no difference for your family, no difference for your community, no difference for hurting people. Why? Because you left it right there. You left it with. I'm safe. I'm safe. Yet trouble is hovering around you every day, all day around you, under you, over you, and everything else. And God is saying that I put something inside of you and you got to get it out. But you're saying, well, just give it to me. Just give it to me, Jesus. Jesus, give it to me. And he's saying, well, you, you can't handle what I have to give to you from where you are. And let me tell you, I, I, I am really, I am really grieved at the fact that so many of us, um, we, we say, well, 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 Lord, does it take all that? Does, does it take to, you know, more than, you know, 15 minutes of a YouTube after 15 minutes, I'm burnt out mentally. I'm not conditioned for mo no more than 15 minutes. I don't really care. I, I tune out after, you know, five minutes after 15, 10 minutes, hit your point, and, and, and I want you to get out of here. When, when God is saying, no, no it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. It's, it's going to take some effort. It's going to take more than, than what you feel like putting in it, than what you feel like. we See, because we are the minute generation, two minutes, three minutes. I wanted, you know, when I first came, when I was a little boy, uh, they they had cereal, and I'm talking about hot cereal. And the way they did it back then, you put it in water, you boiled it, you put your cereal in there, you stirred it up, you wait for all of it to do its thing, and then you know, then you ate it. It took a little little more time. Then as I got older, they came out with instant cereal, instant. You put it in the microwave. That's when technology had you know, evolved and, and now it's instant. Everything is just instant. Instant though, when you got cancer, instant, instant. You need, 
You still want some instant. You still don't want to put the work in to know how God heals. See, it's about how God is going to work for you. It's, it's about how God is going to get you up. How is God going to raise the dead? And when I say dead, I don't necessarily mean literally. I mean, just dead things that are around you. But you are so committed to yourself. You're so committed to, oh, I just, I want it like this. You, you, you got the baby syndrome. What do babies do? They whine and they cry because they want what they want when they want it. And they do not have patience and they do not have uh, discipline. And that's your behavior. And that's the reason why many saints, many children of God are where they are right now because they will not put in the work. They will not go beyond 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, they tune out. I mean, completely tune out. They won't pray. They won't get down on their knees. Uh, and you ain't even got to get down on your knees. You can be in your bed. You can be in your car. You can be on your on your sofa, whatever it is. But meditating and giving God of yourself. And then once you do that, open up God's word to you and say, God, what is it saying to me? It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. Do, do you know I, I've been I've been in school for, I, I don't know, the last 12 years. OK, and I mean, just just grinding it out, just grinding it out. And I've got degrees to show it now for whatever that's worth. But I didn't get it overnight. It took time. They just don't they just don't hand you that you got to work for it. And, and if that is a worldly uh, recognition, recognition and a worldly reward, how much more spiritually? God is just not going to hand you something. He gave you salvation. The rest of it, you got to work for. Got to work for it. Got to work through it. It's going to take some time. So again, the crowning scripture, Hosea 4 and 6, 4 and 6, I believe it is, is that my people perish for King James Version, a lack of knowledge. Because I know Jesus as my savior. That's not enough to know him as your savior. You, have, you also have to know him as your legislator. You also have to know him as your doctor. And, and, I, and I don't mean that by, you know, I had a court case and I went to, uh, 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 I mean, Oh, let's just say, let's just say, know him as your legislator, your lawyer. I had a court case and I went to court and God worked it out. OK, well, maybe he did through his grace and his mercy. He did work it out, but he, he did. And, and there's some things that are knowing and some things that are unknowing. And, and that's OK, too. But God requires that, you know. Now that you, you can't know the mysteries of God. But what I'm saying is you got to know more than what you know. Stop doing stupid stuff. Is what I'm saying. Uh, now, if you go into the doctor and you say, well, God, he he worked it out. This the God. That's the doctor. He don't practice. He is the great physician. OK, that's that's good. But in him being the great physician, there is something great should, that should be in you. And that is, is that if God is is talking to you about your diet. Or if you are you have a, a an issue with something in your body as it relates to uh, maybe your sugar levels are uh, are out of uh, the parameters in which they should be in or you have some circulatory issues or you have some weight issues, some bone issues, whatever that is, God is still requiring that you learn the, about the God of health. Not just the God that heals, because if God heals you and you still maintain the ignorance in the way that you manage your body from a health standpoint, 
then what you are saying, God, after you do this, then, I, then I'm going to continue my lifestyle and you'll have to come back and do it again. And then you have to do it again and again and again. To the point to where he's looking at us now and he says, I had so much for you. I had so much for you, but I'm not going to be able to do that. In fact, the thing that you embraced was the fact that you would come home and be in heaven with me temporarily until I make a new heaven and a new earth. And then that's where you're going to be at. But but since you embraced the salvation part and you didn't embrace the God of health or the God of resources and the God of the economy, the God that is monetary, since you didn't embrace none of that stuff, that part will perish. That part will perish. So what I'm going to do is since you can't figure out how to be disciplined enough to put down the bonbons while you're eating and you continue to get larger and larger and larger, whatever the case may be. I'm not talking about people that are big. Some people are like that just just innately that is just in their DNA. So I'm not talking about that. I'm using that for an example. It could be anything. OK, I, I, please don't don't hear that from me. It could be anything. But my point is, is that because you don't you don't embrace the knowledge of God. See, there's knowledge of God. There's just not God. There's just not the healing part of God. It's just not the resurrection part of God. But there's knowledge of God. But we we but we want to embrace everything else. You can embrace the knowledge on how to go sell some some weed. Or how to roll up one and how to get high and how it makes you feel. You can embrace the knowledge of making a phone call and saying, hello, how you doing? What's on your mind? What you got going on today? You want to go get a little something to eat? You, you embrace all that knowledge. You know how to finesse and wiggle as it relates to when you want something, how you want it to make you feel good. But when it comes down to the knowledge that requires discipline, the knowledge that's going to require life to emanate from it, at that point you you go you go limp, you go numb, you 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 go bored, you know you lose patience. Uh, you say, well, you know that that that's that's, that's too much. That's that's going to require too much, and yet. Everything around you is just in a whirlwind. And so now you're looking around and you're reaching for help. You're reaching for help. And God's saying, it's help in you, but you got to know how to get it out. It's help around you, but you got to know how to talk to it. You got to know how to talk to it. See, you see, we, we go after money. Well, money should be going and coming after us, but you got to know how to direct it. See, you got to know how to direct it. You can't get mad at Donald Trump and Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. Some might say one is evil, the other one is not evil. It don't matter. All three of them got, got what you need. They all three of them got something that you that you lack. I'm going to come back here in a second. I'm going to stop this right now because I want to talk about economics. I want to talk about I want to talk about money a little bit because the Bible says that money toucheth all things, and if it is a thing, not spiritualized, not faith, okay. If it is a thing, then money, in some way, form, or fashion, it will touch it, and if it touches it then that's something that you should be aware of. Nine times out of 10, every it, just by every direction that you go in in life and you're struggling with, some way, somewhere in that money has a direct line into it. And if we can get on that line and understand that line, it will make us better. Health, health. You go to the doctor, you ain't got no insurance. You ain't got no insurance because you can't pay for a policy. You don't have an insurance policy. 
And the reason why you don't have it is because you can't pay for it. And the reason why you can't pay for it is because you lack the resources. So what is attached to that? Money. Money. So now because I don't have money, I don't get quality health care. Ooh, we I got to delve into this. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. All right. I'm going to stop it right there and uh, I'll be back.